Our life in dunya is extremely short, cuz. Wallahi, no matter how long you think you're going to live, your wallahi, your life in this world is so short. And even if Allah allows you to see a hundred, even if Allah allows you to see a hundred, like now if I told you that I'm gonna live for a hundred years, you sit there and think, wow, a hundred years. Ya bay, yay, shu a hundred years, cuz. But a hundred years is nothing. A hundred years is nothing. How old are you now? Just give me ages. 25? 22? Where? How much? 18. Who else? 28. 28? 34. 34. Five. Any one of these brothers? 34 years, yeah? 19, yeah? 25. Summarize your life for me. Moments, isn't it? Honestly, you, you, you think back now, summarize your whole life. Could you fill out a book? Summarize it for me, bro. Yeah, you know what, last year, 2014. 2014, what did you do in 2014? You could summarize it very quickly. A whole year, 365 days, 24 hours a day, 60 minutes an hour? And what is it? Nothing but a memory, bro. Nothing but a memory. What did you achieve last year? All year? What did you do? What did you achieve? How much of it can you remember? So don't think, you know, I'm young, I'm going to live for a long time. Yeah, live for a long time, doing what? May you've already been living for 20, 30, 40 years, and what have you accomplished? If you've already accomplished nothing, and you're currently doing nothing, even if I gave you another thousand years, what good is it? What good is it? Now, my brothers, I want to share something with you that really affected me. And I have to be clear because I don't want anyone... There's no Dalil for what I'm about to say. So I don't want anyone to walk out and think that this is Deen or... No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not the case at all. But this, I mean, it really did affect me and I'm hoping, I'm praying to Allah that it will also have a similar effect. One of the Mashaykh was mentioning something in his talk and it's extremely powerful. Someone was asking, yeah? Allah Azza wa Jal is what? Ghafoor Rahim is the most merciful, is the most forgiving. True or not? Yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives all sins. Yes or not? True? So, one of the, so someone posed the question, and really, uh, uh, I really want you to give this question thought. So someone asked, he says, brother, if Allah is really Ghafur Rahim, if Allah is really the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most merciful, why is it that when a kafir dies, why is it that when a kafir dies, this, this, this question I'm about to ask, uh, uh, say, is very dangerous. And if you're not a strong believer, it could really cause some serious problems with you. He says, why is it that when a disbeliever, let's say a kafir, an unbeliever, who lived 60 years of his life in kufr, he, yani he never believed in Allah. Why is it that when this person dies and he dies on kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws him into hell fire for how long? For how long? Eternity. How long is eternity? Forever. Khalidina fiha abada. So the brother's asking the question, and I feel like it's a genuine question. If this Rabb who claims to be Ghafur Rahim, most merciful, most compassionate, this man was a kafir for 60 years. This kafir was a disbeliever for 60 years. Oh Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, the most forgiving. Why are you throwing him in Jahannam for eternity? I mean, look, the man was a kafir for 60 years. Throw him in hellfire for 60 years. Ya khalas, kufr is of high state. Throw him in for 120, double his sentence. Ya give him triple life. Give him triple life. Put him in there for 180 years. But for eternity, where's the justice? 
You know, my brothers, I have to be honest, this played a big fitna in my heart, man. Allah, Six years ago. Why is he being thrown into hellfire for eternity? Son, I can't help myself. Started asking. Look at the answer, man. This is very important for every person sitting in this room. When I started asking, this is the answer I came to. It says, when Allah Azawajal took this kafir's life at 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life at a point where Allah Azawajal with his ultimate wisdom knew that had this person lived for eternity, he was going to always live on kufr anyway. That's why he's thrown into hellfire for eternity. And when a Muslim dies without Salah, and how many times have you seen this? And this is a very big disease in the states of our hearts. Many of you think, cuz I'm going to pull up. Many of you think, cuz Wallahi, just give me a chance and I'm going to pray. And what you don't realize, what you don't realize is if you die without Salah, if you die without Quran, if you die without Iman, if you die without these things, Wallahi, how many times have you heard about a brother who died without Salah and you think, man, if only he prayed. Wallahi, you know, I remember talking to this brother, you know, and he said to me he had planned on doing this and he had planned on doing that. What you don't realize is when Allah Azawajal took his life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew when this person dies without Salah, Allah knew when he took his life. Had he lived for another hundred years, he was never going to pray a single day, bro. Had this person lived for a thousand years, he wasn't going to pray a single day. And that's the truth, man. Can you see the danger? Can you see the danger? So many of you think now that, cause you know what, me, Wallahi, you don't know. Just because I don't pray, that doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. And you're right. You're right. It's, 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 it's not to say that, look, I pray and you don't pray, so therefore I'm better than you. That I have a beard that you don't have been, so therefore I'm better than you. No, that, that's, that's, you know, that's not how we think. No. But my brother, if you're someone who doesn't pray, and you've been making intentions to pray for the last 10, 15 years, and you're still not praying. Brother, if you die today, you will stand before Allah on the day of judgment as someone that was never going to pray. If you die today without Qur'an, you stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment as someone that was never going to read this book. If you die today as someone that was busy at work, occupied with his work, occupied with building his house, occupied with extending his house, occupied with updating his car, what you don't realize is you stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment as someone that was going to always be busy. But when does this change, man? When? My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for a short time. And Allah subhanahu He says in Quran something amazing. Allah says what? فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ And where will you go? Where will you run? Go bro, go, go. You know, lately I've been speaking to a lot of boys. And you know, Wallahi, I have to be honest. Sometimes I reach a point in my da'wah where I just want to snap. But, you know, I've got to be, the people look at me as a religious figure, so, you know, I do, I do the fake smile. And the <laughs> but in my heart, I think, that I wish you fry in hell, bro. No, and and, and not, it's not to say that that's a good thing. That's a sickness in my heart. No matter what happens in your da'wah, you should never think like that. But because I'm human and because of your own shortcomings, you know what I mean? Like you, 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 you really reach a point where you think, you know what? Like, ruh, ruh, Allah, you come like, bro. Why? Because I come across this attitude. You come to talk to a brother, ya akhi, come on to deen, come to Allah, come to the masjid, and people make you feel like, you know what, I'm asking him for something. People make you feel like, you know what, I'm asking him to pay me a wage. 
You ask me pray? Yeah, if I get the chance. Brother, pull up. Brother, I'm, not, not, you know, I'm busy. Not now. And I think, guys, where are you going with this attitude? Where does this attitude come from? When are you going to pull up? When? And pulling up, you know, that this, this, this thing, it, it, it doesn't just apply to the guy who doesn't pray. No, I'm talking to the guy who's prayed for the last 10 years. He's been praying for the last 10 years and still in his salah he has no khushua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying successful are those believers. Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Who? Who are the successful believers? Does anyone know the ayah? Allah who? Allah says successful are the believers, those who, are, those who in their salat, they have khushu'ah. But what does that mean? If Allah is saying khushu'ah in salat, you're successful. But what if I don't have khushu'ah in my salat? Am I successful? Am I successful? No, you're not. They've been praying for 10 years. For 10 years you've been praying. And you still don't know what Fatiha means. Ten years you've been praying and there's still no khushua. Ten years you've been praying and you still don't feel anything. You've been praying for the last two, three years and still in your salah. Wallahi, am I taken oath by Allah? Most of us in our salah, they're crunching numbers. He's quoting jobs, he's thinking about his house, he's thinking about what his wife has cooked for lunch or for dinner. Or he's thinking about what girl he's going to marry. He's thinking, this, this is what, these are the thoughts in our prayers. So when I say pull up, I'm not just talking about what, like, you know what, that you're smoking pot in the garage and that you don't smoke. You know, and, and sorry, you know, that, 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 you know, that he's someone who smokes pot and that he's not praying. No, it's across the board. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Fa'ina, you know, he says, Fa'ina tadhabuna, where are you going to go? This attitude of, you know what, cuz, I don't need this now. I don't have time for it. But where are you going with it? You don't want to pray. That's fine. You don't pray today and tomorrow, and I'm busy, and I got this job, and I got this contract, and I got this, and until it. So, all right. And then what? And then what? Where are you going to go? People are running, 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 busy, busy, occupied. Thinking that they're not going to meet Allah. Thinking that they're not going to meet Allah. Wallahi, my brothers, the truth is in our hearts. The truth is in our hearts. Some of us really are still in denial that He's going to stand before Allah. <coughs> Do you know that? Do you know that you're going to die? Do you know that you're going to stand before Allah on your own? Do you know Allah is going to speak to you directly? Do you know? No, Wallahi, Wallahi, I take note by Allah. You know, I've seen boys, big boys, boys who think there's something in the area, something, you know, he's on the ta'li tarus from head to toe, gym, steroids, looks like an alien, whatever you want, the fool works. The fool works. <laughs> And you'll be in the car with him and he gets pulled over by a highway patroller. Wallahi, he shits the gear instantly. Because what's wrong with you? His hands start shaking, but because I'm in the car, he tries to keep a cool and calm, but you can see it all over his face after. His lips start to go dry, he starts sticking his lips. Because you're right? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and really, what's he scared of? What's he scared of? A man, a highway patroller is going to come and stand at your door. And what's the worst case? Why? That you were speeding? What? That you were speeding? What's the worst thing he's going to do to you? Let's say you were flying, right? What's he going to do? Take your license and cut it? What? Suspend you for six months? What's the worst thing he can do? Wallahi, people, buckle, buckle, buckle. But I tell you, you're going to stand before Allah. Now, my brothers, people, and I've been in this situation, 
people will have court the next morning. Court, court. Maybe at there, some issues. Maybe it's a crime. Maybe it's a crime. He's looking at five years, ten years. Wallahi, wallahi, he doesn't sleep that night. Stress, 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 stress. Stress. And he tries, he'll exercise every possible avenue, everything. He's got the best lawyer, the best this, the best that. The witnesses are there, the paperwork is there. There's halas, he's ticked every single box. There's nothing more he could possibly do. And still that night, wallahi, he doesn't sleep. And he goes to court, you can see it on his face. He's shaking in his hands. And you know, I mean, the worst thing, what's the judge going to throw at him? What, five years in jail? And people buckle. People in court break down and start crying. And I'm telling you, you're going to stand before Allah. It's all right. So what, bro? That highway patroller that's standing at the door, right? If you're thick enough, if you're thick enough, if you, if you, if you can stutter enough times, you'll probably annoy him to the point where he says, you know what, bro, I don't care what you did, just threaten me, man. I can't get a word out of you. Or if you keep him there long enough, this, this, this man, this highway patrol is going to have to tell you, listen, bro, uh, if you, you know what, I've got to go to the toilet. But when you stand before Allah, where are you going to go? And you're going to be standing naked, uncircumcised, barefooted. Where are you going to go? Allah, my brothers, this attitude we have towards the whether you're a gangster or whether you're someone who just thinks cars, wallahi, I'm just, you know, I'm so flat out with work, you know, I've just got so much work to do, you know, look, I'm, where are you going, cars, where? Where are you going? And people have this big attitude, people have this big chip on their shoulder, cars. That, Ya Allah, Sara Arosi, this bloke, bro. He's coming to tell me about Salah. He's coming to tell me about going to the masjid. He's coming to tell me about this. He's coming to tell me about that. Brother, Wallahi, Wallahi, go. Do what you want. Do as you please. I don't care. Wallahi, I don't care. I'm coming for your sake. Brother, you coming on to deen is for your benefit. Wallahi, it's for your benefit. Get rid of this attitude. People have this thing in their hearts. They have this, they have this grudge, they have this arrogance. And that's what it is. Wallahi, it's arrogance towards Allah. Get rid of it. Because honestly, it's only going to destroy you. And I've said this a hundred thousand times. And Wallahi, I've said it another hundred thousand times. My brothers, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, because what I'm about to say, I know, is going to definitely offend some. Definitely. But it's the truth. And if I can't speak it, then really, I'm wasting my time. My brothers, with all respect and with all adab, I speak to you from my heart. With all respect. Brother, Allah doesn't need you. You understand that? Do you sincerely, truly, and Allah doesn't need you. Allah doesn't need your salah. Allah doesn't need your fasting. Allah doesn't need your charity. Allah doesn't need you to come to the masjid. Allah doesn't need you. Period. There's no other way to look at it. Period. There is no other way to look at it. Allah doesn't need you. You come, you pray, you fast, you make an effort. You don't make an effort. Allah doesn't care. You need Him. He doesn't need you. Please understand. Please understand. Allah is the King. He's the money. He doesn't need you. He has billions and billions of angels who worship Him day and night. They never disobey Him. 
They never argue. They never preach up. They don't have a chip on their shoulder. These are angels who from the moment they're created to the moment they die, they're in one continuous sister. And on the day of judgment, they say, Oh Allah, forgive us, for we did not give hak to your ibadah. And you're walking around like Allah needs you. You understand? Sorry, am I shouting? Is it too loud? Wallahi, I don't understand. Forgive me, bro. Forgive me. Maybe, maybe, I don't. Allah doesn't need you. You need Him. We're in need of Him. He doesn't need your salah. Salah doesn't need you. Salah doesn't need you. something years old laying down the bed like a I said to him really bro is this your life is this it you've been alive for 30 something years this is it bro this is, it, this, is this your final product where are you going to go bro where Go look at millionaires. Yeah, you know what? You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't trust me. I'm a big spinner. Fine. Just jump onto Google, bro. And look at millionaires who commit suicide. Look at it, go. Where are you going to go? Shabab, wallahi, when will we understand, bro? We need Allah. Allah doesn't need us. Wallahi, my brother, coming on to be, coming to the masjid, coming, Wallahi, this, this doesn't benefit me, doesn't change me in any way, shape or form. I don't get to pay the wage here. Wallahi, trust me, it's not like, you know what, that, that, you know, it's not like as if I get 10 bucks a head for every person that's, 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 that's I'm not. I seriously, seriously don't get paid. Wallahi, my brothers, it's you, man. I'm telling you very clear. There's deen in your life, you'll find happiness. Wallahi, you'll find success. No deen in your life. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَوْكَ This is Allah speaking. You know what the problem is, my brothers, when there's no iman, you start believing what your eyes see and what your ear hears, and you don't believe what Allah says. See, being a Muslim, this is deep. Please, please, just give me your hearts. This is very deep. Allah says, being a Muslim means believing in the what? In the unseen, yeah? So, one of the pillars of Iman, the Aqidah of a Muslim, is to believe in what? In the unseen. In the angels, and in the jinn, and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And on the day of judgment, and that there's a Jannah, and that there's a hell, yes? But what is also true, 
is that if I see something in front of my eyes that contradicts what Allah and His Prophet says, regardless of how real it looks, regardless of how impressive it is, if what I see with my eyes is contradicting what Allah and His Prophet says, I completely deny what I see. Does that make sense? Because our eyes show us, our eyes show us that those who have girlfriends are happy. Our eyes show us, and let's be real, please, I'm not, I'm not here to, please, let, let's, let's be real, let's be real. Our eyes show us that those people who went out and got a nice home loan, who's now paying off his house, he's paying off a mortgage, you believe in your heart, your eyes are showing you up, that these people are happy. Our eyes are showing us that that bloke who's driving a brand new car, the bloke that's driving a brand new BMW or whatever the case is, your eyes are showing you up that this person is happy. Your eyes are showing you, especially these young boys here, yeah? Especially these young boys. Your eyes are showing you that this person that's acting like a gangster, this person who has tattoos everywhere, and let me just assure you, yeah? Let me just clarify something. I'm not speaking about the brother who had a tattoo and now has repented. Allah Azza wa Jal forgives all sins, right? So let, let, me, let me be very, very clear. There's a lot of brothers who have tattoos, who have repented and made tawbah, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their tawbah, 100% you're clear with Allah Azza wa Jal. But those people who love it, those people who desire it, and let me tell you, if you have a tattoo that you've repented to Allah about, but in your heart you love the fact it's there, then that is not true repentance. That is not true repentance. True repentance is every time you see it, every time you see it, you're disgusted. Every time you look at it, you're ashamed. But there are those people who because he had his tattoo in Jahiliyyah, and now he happens to be on D, right? He loves the fact that when he comes into the masjid, yeah, there's this attitude now. I don't know if you see it, but I see it all the time. Yeah, so now you come, you know the brother could very well be wearing a t-shirt, but he's wearing a singlet, right? And you can see that the tattoo is a couple of years old and obviously he's pulled up, but he loves the attention he gets from it. Yeah, his heart dances when you look at it, bro. Yeah, he, oh, his heart dances. Let me assure you and let me tell you, your tawbah is incomplete, your tawbah is not valid, because a tawbah nadam, nadam and regret is the essence of tawbah. And if you don't regret what you have done, if you are not ashamed, if you are not embarrassed, then you haven't truly repented. So let me just assure you, to the older and to the younger, the Prophet of Allah has cursed, in the authentic hadith, he has cursed any person that gets a tattoo. The one who gets it and the one who does it for him, he will earn the curse and the ghadab of the Prophet and Allah. So congratulations. Shaykh the Allah, 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 So if you have it, I'm telling you now, my brother, look, I'm, I'm, wallahi, pull up and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're a young boy, and you desire it, and you think, when I grow up, you know, and, and you know what, it always starts off cute, yeah? Always starts off with his, you know, his mother's name, or his mother's date of birth, yeah, or his sister, and who is your habib, and who Allah, he loves his sister so much. But you know, whatever, whatever, wallahi, I'm not singling out people. I don't want anyone to listen to me. Nah, it's, it's, but it's the concept. It's the concept. It's the concept. So going back to what I'm saying, whatever your eyes are showing you, no matter how much happiness your eyes show you, look, this guy's happy. He doesn't have Allah in his life. Wallahi, 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 he's miserable. Woman arada an dhikri, Allah is speaking Quran. Whoever shies away, whoever turns away, whoever rejects my remembrance, my dhikr, my deen, my ibadah, whoever walks away, whoever shuns away the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً For this person is a miserable, wretched, pathetic, run-down life.
So you can claim on your tongue what you want. Allah doesn't lie. Allah never lies. If I have sin in my life, is there happiness in my life? Shabbat, be honest, please. Well, like, I, wallahi, and I understand people are looking at me. Is it that you're scared? Is it because I was shouting? Forgive me. What, 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 like, I, I'm, honestly, just, just please talk to me. If I have sin in my life, do you think there's happiness in there, If Allah is not in my life, do you think I'm even going to smell happiness? وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَمْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Anyone who walks away from Allah. So yeah, you could be a billionaire, private jet, private jet, hotel suites, pet houses, women you've lost count, but you don't have Allah in your life. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا Robbie Williams Was it Robbie or Robin? Whatever his name is, bro. One of the most famous comedians in the world. One of the biggest actors in the world. Multi-millionaire. How did he die? Who? How? Depression, no, no. But how did he die? Suicide. Suicide. Allahu Akbar. Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. How did he die? Huh? Whitney Houston, one of the greatest singers of the world. How did she die? Talk, talk, when you people don't, don't, don't know. Are you embarrassed? Whitney Houston, how did she die? Huh? Drug overdose, like a junkie. A junkie. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, I remember I, any, all I ever wanted in my life was to move the way he moved. <laughs> when I was young, I used to go out, all I, I used to moonwalk up and down and my fat ass going left and right, it was just, like, you know what, it just looks wrong, cuz, you know, just like, you know, I just sit down and embarrass me. But I used, I, there wasn't a song I couldn't sing for you, there, there was no one back in that, I, there was no one I loved more than him. Yeah? Where is he now? How did he die? Oh, yeah. How many more examples do you need to see? Where are we going? Where are you going? Why, my brothers, Allah doesn't need us. Because we need Him. And the law from his love and from his rahmah. Let me turn this talk around because I can see some people that are depressed and it's almost like as if they're ready to throw themselves in front of a bus. Now don't. Wallahi, my brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal from his rahmah. No matter what you've done in your life, right now, right now, no matter what you've done in your life, if right now you sincerely, sincerely, sincerely from your heart, raise your hand, you don't even have to raise your hands up. If you sincerely from your heart right now turn to Allah and make tawbah and regret what you've done and promise Allah Azza wa Jal that you would never do it again and that you won't go back to it, right now Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive all your sins. Look how beautiful Allah is. Man. So my brothers, wallahi, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled with this world and what it has to offer you. Man. And you know what kills me, you know, is there's these boys and I see lots of them. He comes on to deen for three, four months and then vanishes. Comes back for two, three weeks and then vanishes. Comes on, because, like, wallahi, I don't understand. Is this, I mean, you, you, you come as a fashion parade, what, 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 what is it? And I see boys like they genuinely come, he tastes it, he loves it. He really gets on a pump, you know, for two, three months, and then he buckles, and then he goes, Allahu alam how long he goes for, and then he comes back and he goes, Tabiakhita, when's this gonna stop, man? When are you gonna come on and stay on, man? And I know 
there's many brothers who pray a little bit and stops. He prays two, three prayers a day, or you know what? He'll pray for two, three weeks and then he stops. What is that going to stop, man? Wallahi, my brothers, now is the time. Wallahi, tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow, tomorrow, you know, tomorrow, it's not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So my brothers, I want to wrap it up so we can go outside and have a feed, you know. Wallahi, in your heart, I'm telling you sincerely, bro, pull up, man. Wallahi, pull up. And stop making these feeble excuses, bro. Stop making these petty excuses. Don't be distracted. Don't let your work take you away from Allah. Don't let your business take you away from Allah. Don't let your houses take you away from Allah. Brother, all you have is Allah, man. And don't forget about those people who if they died without salah had they lived for eternity they were never going to pray with them. That kafir, you know some, some, some of us say Akhi, look I know, I know, I know he was a kafir but he was such a nice guy man. He died without kufr. Allah knew. Allah already knows. When Allah takes your soul you know, like many people tell me, oh, Wallah, haram, man. He was so young, 18 years old, yeah, haram. Did he pray? No, nah, he was only 18. What do you mean he was only 18, bro? When Allah took his life at 18 and he wasn't praying, Allah took his life and knew if he was to live for 100 years, he was never going to pray. But my brother, I ask you and I'll end with this. If you died tonight, What condition will it be? If you died tonight and whatever was whatever is missing in your life now means you were never gonna have it in your life. So if you're someone who doesn't pray and you died tonight, you know what that means? You were never gonna pray. If you die tonight and you're someone who cannot read Quran and you're not even in a school and you're not even trying, what does that mean? I want you to answer now. If I die tonight without Quran, what does it mean? It means what? I was never going to have Quran. And if I died without Siyam, I died without ever fasting, what does that mean? What does it mean? I was never going to have CM. Now I ask you, do you want to die like this? Do you want to die like this? No, my brothers. Understand, my brothers, Allah doesn't need you, you need Him. And Wallahi, we need to beg and cry to Allah, Oh Allah, give me salah, give me fasting, give me Quran, give me ibadah. Give me Hajj, give me Umrah. Oh Allah, give me lessons, give me lectures, give me, give me, give me, give me. Don't be arrogant with Allah. Be thankful and grateful.